Let's talk about fiber again, because there's more to fiber than simply reaching a certain number of grams a day. Your gut will be devastated if you eat 50 grams of fiber from apples only. Don't get me wrong, apples are great, but our gut microbiota depends on the diversity of fiber as much as it depends on the amount of fiber you get, if not more. Diversity of fiber? What does this even mean? Water soluble and insoluble fiber? No, not really. We will get to that in a moment. For more information and a practical guide, we highly recommend the book Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Bosowitz. Types of fiber. There are 20,000 edible plant species on this planet and each comes with its own set of dietary fibers. Sadly, only 200 plant species are commonly eaten and just four crops, rice, corn, potato and wheat, make up nearly 60% of calories we get from plants. Dietary fiber is a structure of smaller carbohydrate units of varying complexity that cannot be digested by or are inaccessible to human digestive enzymes. There are quite a few broader types of dietary fiber like beta-glucans, cellulose, fructans, etc. But it is important to understand that each of these types of dietary fiber describes an enormous number of different fiber structures. Fermentable fiber. Dietary fiber cannot be digested by human digestive enzymes. Of course, we do have enzymes to digest carbohydrates in our small intestine, but only a handful, and you could say that they are limited to starchy carbohydrates. We leave the digestion of other non-starchy carbohydrates, the digestion of some dietary fibers, to our gut microbiota. Dietary fibers are commonly separated into water-soluble and water-insoluble fiber. Most water-soluble fiber is fermentable, meaning the enzymes provided by our gut bacteria are able to break it down, producing short-chain fatty acids. Most water-insoluble fiber is not fermentable. Most plant foods contain a good mix of both. Diversity of fiber our gut bacteria provides tens of thousands of enzymes for the fermentation of dietary fiber, and each type of dietary fiber requires its own set of enzymes. Thus, a specific plant food will foster the growth of a specific small set of gut bacteria. The health of your gut microbiota, meaning the dominance of health-promoting, fiber-munching species over disease-promoting species, thus requires you to eat a large diversity of dietary fiber. The larger the diversity in plants you eat, the more fiber-munching bacteria species can grow, support each other and keep you and your gut healthy. Good gut health. Our gut plays a central role in our immune system, metabolic health, arterial health, hormone balance and even brain health. The fermentation of dietary fiber produces short-chain fatty acids. The three most common short-chain fatty acids are acetate, propionate and butyrate. These short-chain fatty acids circulate in our bodies, affecting practically every tissue and organ, including the brain. In our gut, they suppress inflammation and the growth of bad bacteria species like E. coli and Salmonella. They repair and provide energy for our gut lining, actively healing leaky gut. They help with irritable bowel syndrome by improving motility and decreasing hypersensitivity. Effects of short-chain fatty acids The short-chain fatty acids circulating through our body promote good health wherever they go. They help with blood sugar regulation, lower cholesterol, regulate appetite and even suppress fat accumulation in fat cells. Short-chain fatty acids also affect our brain, helping with memory and learning. Good gut health also means that health-damaging mechanisms are suppressed. These include the release of bacterial endotoxins into our vascular system, one of the main drivers of arterial inflammation, and the production of TMAO, which is linked to cancer, type 2 diabetes and heart disease. The fewer health-promoting bacteria species there are, the higher the risk for gut dysbiosis, the dominance of disease-promoting species. This means less short-chain fatty acid production, plus the strengthening of disease-promoting mechanisms. Gut dysbiosis. The damage of gut dysbiosis on your health cannot be overstated. 
Common symptoms related to gut dysbiosis include abdominal pain or cramping, gas, bloating, food allergies and sensitivities, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, indigestion, heartburn and reflux, weight gain, fatigue, brain fog, mood imbalance, joint pains or muscle aches, and difficulty concentrating. Immune-related conditions associated with gut dysbiosis include type 1 diabetes, asthma, seasonal allergies, and various autoimmune diseases. Metabolic conditions associated with gut dysbiosis include obesity, type 2 diabetes, coronary artery disease, chronic kidney disease, gout, liver diseases and pancreatitis. Hormonal conditions include endometriosis, PCOS, sexual dysfunction and hormone-driven cancers. Neuropsychiatric conditions include Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, ADHD, depression, chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. Improve gut health. What can you do to improve your gut health? The answer is diversity of plants. So how many do you need? About 30 different plant foods a week, excluding dried herbs and spices. The more, the better. As Dr. Will Bosowitz says in his book Fiber Fueled, every time you go to the supermarket, think diversity of plants. Every time you're cooking a meal, diversity of plants. When you sit down at the dinner table and start loading up your plate, diversity of plants. Think about your breakfast. Do you eat the same kind of rolled oats every day? Why not go for a mixture of rolled grains? Think about all the different fruits and berries you could use, the nuts and seeds you could sprinkle on top. For your savory meals, try some new vegetables, cycle through various beans and lentils, and use a variety of fresh herbs. The possibilities are endless. Food sensitivities If you have IBS or severe food sensitivities, you obviously cannot just start eating the foods you are sensitive to. In his book, Dr. Bosowitz included a four-week program to safely and steadily increase the plant diversity for those troubled by the intake of fiber or FODMAPs. It boosts 65 plant-based recipes designed to optimize gut health and maximize short-chain fatty acid production. If you have any gut issues, please make sure to first consult a gastroenterologist before making any drastic changes to your diet. Especially if you are currently constipated, you cannot simply increase your fiber intake. There is no one-fits-all approach when it comes to restoring gut health. We hope you liked this video. Let us know about your ideas to increase the plant diversity in your diet. We look forward to reading your comments. See you next week!